Harbor is completely changing the way Bind is played for everybody. NRG have been abusing this agent on this map, so much so that teams are absolutely frightened to face them here. We've seen Harbor take over Pearl, but I think he's going to hit this map even harder. His walls are oppressive, suffocating, and there's not much you can do about it. Like, wasn't this guy supposed to be a bad agent? Like, what happened to that? So just how exactly are NRG getting this much value out of this water-bending monster? Well, you'd be surprised. He synergizes with so many different agents in ways you never thought were imaginable. Now watch closely as I uncover what exactly makes this map Harbor's Playground. Wait a second, did, did you guys see that? Holy cannoli, Harbor. How do you keep your beard so trimmed? Well, Teets, I use Manscaped. Their trimmers are perfect for your face, body, and undercarriage. They're the sponsor of this video. That's right, guys. It's time we talked hygiene. Body hair can leave you prone to buildup of sweat and bacteria, both of which can lead to nasty odors and that swamp crotch feeling. So check out the new Lawnmower 4.0 by Manscaped. Its ceramic blades are designed to help prevent nicks and cuts. It's also waterproof, cordless, and also has an LED light so you can navigate those blind spots in the shower with ease. The performance package also comes with deodorant and toner spray for your ultimate orbs, plus the new Weed Whacker 2.0 nose and ear hair trimmer. It's cordless, rechargeable, and is created with fancy tech, which helps reduce snags and tugs. And for a limited time, when you purchase the performance package at manscaped.com, you'll get both the Shed Travel Bag and the Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs for free. So quit being smelly and go to manscaped.com today to get 20% off plus free international shipping when you use promo code TEETS at checkout. Now let's get back to the breakdown. We have one of the first bind games where Harbor is played, and to be honest, this might be his best map. His walls just have so many different uses. Harbor can take space, retake, deny lurks, get you safer plants, and to be honest, I think he's better than Brimstone on this map. Sorry, Brimmy. But this round we see energy set up in a 1-4 stack setup. If the attackers go B, Viper is going to stall out with her mollies and wall to try and buy time for her team to rotate over for a sick retake. And if they go A, they're running into 4 people. Now, if you take a look at Furious comp, they have double duelists and are going to run it down. And to be honest, this is actually a great way to counter Harbor, explode past his walls, and overwhelm him. He doesn't have stall utility to hold back a push, so it's going to be interesting to see how energy adapt. Regardless, Furious' plan is pretty simple. Rush a site. So they explode out of the buy phase with a stim beacon plus a skybird to rush past the Harbor high tide and jet dashes out. Victor didn't expect any of this and gets run over. Sam is holding on to lamps, but pokes his head out. He uses his cascade to cut off any potential short players and swings behind it. He spots Brimstone flushing past him and takes him down. But Fury I have pushed back sight, and Dejazin takes down Artis. Was this an overextension? FNS peeks up from spawn, kills Jet, Viper tries to get the trade, but Salmon FNS double swing and he falls too. This leaves Mazin in a 2 versus 1. Both energy players sprint over, and here is where we see that sick retake. This cascade that Sam throws completely blocks off one part of sight. What this does is allow energy to funnel out without running into a plethora of crossfires on sight. And granted, there's only one person here, but the concept remains the same. This ginormous wall just rushed onto sight, and energy could be behind it, maybe wrapping around it. Sky doesn't know, so she has to make a play and try to clutch up the round. Yeah, as it's counting down, there's a guiding light for him to detect, get a little bit of info. <laughs> Quick shots coming in from Energy. Energy knew that Sky had to make the next move and waited for her to make a mistake. The cascade was just too intimidating and secured the clutch. So I'll be honest, Furious Double Duelist comp looked really good on this map, and it took time for energy to adjust. They were getting completely ran over, but that was until they decided to take the fight to them. This round, energy start in a 2-3 setup, and they're fighting short with the 3 based off the information their sky gets on long. By playing proactive like this, you gain a better idea of what the offense's game plan is, and then you can stack the right players in the right spots. Not only that, but they also have Sage's res. This ultimate is hard to use on defense, so by making an aggressive play with her, she can trade you out and then use her res in that way. Now, Furious plan is to work the op that they've invested into this round, and Energy know they have an op from the previous round, which is why they aren't just insta-peeking into anyone short. Once Sky tells them what's going on, they'll make their next move accordingly. Furious start the round by smoking themselves near fountain, hopping into it, and they dodge the skybird that Crashies has been throwing down long at the start of every round. 
By doing this, the attackers hope to give him a false sense of security with his bird not going off and catch him off guard when they swing. Great counterplay. But just because the bird didn't tag anyone, that doesn't mean that Crashies isn't careful. He knows something like this is possible. So he jump spots and just plays for information. He eventually dogs out and spots people long. Crashies relays this information back to his short players and they immediately swing and almost take down Brimstone. He falls back to heal, but so does Energy. Only instead of healing, they run back to sight and Sage and Ray's reposition towards Shower to go for another aggressive peek. I mean, Sage still has a res, so, you know, why not? But they leave Harbor short, and this is because he can counter the Viper utility perfectly. By timing his walls whenever Viper puts hers up, this allows him to safely play in front of her smokes. If the attackers want to push through it, they need to dry swing through Harbor's wall and then probably die. Die. or they have to commit more utility and make their presence known. But then, this isn't so much of a lurk wall anymore, is it? So Sage and Ray's notice nothing is in shower, so they push even deeper. Harbor puts up his wall to deter any short players from pushing to buy his teammates time to clear outside shower. Victor and Artis push forward and trade out the Viper. Artis pops his res like I mentioned before, and this proactiveness has worked perfectly. Now because Furia lost all control on A, they have to hurry up B and start their execute. The swing out for MW Zira. Trailblazer from behind. Oh my. It's a dance. I don't think it's Sia Finesse though. As Crashy falls, he still gets the kill to Maxine. So that's the spike down. And we just saw the perfect reaction from FNS and Crashies. When playing defense on bind, it is important that you hold some form of map control for your team. Whether it's hookah, long, or even elbow, these spots make your retakes easier by allowing your teammates to pinch from more choke points. These two realized they were being executed on, they gave up the site, died, but they got three important kills by holding onto long. FNS recognized that Sky was going to pinch because her dog missed him and he put her down. And then he takes one more with him with his snake bite from the grave. But the round isn't over yet. Energy still has to retake against an op. And again we see this harbor cascade put in work. It is so good at pushing ops off angles. Like what are they supposed to do? Dejazin had to walk all the way around it while unscoped and Harbor put him down. It's a three versus one, Khalil teleports, heads to site for the plants, but I'll be honest, this one's over. Does he have the lineup? All three players are already there. <laughs> it's the first Got one two. there, the second one, oh, it's a long break! Oh, 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 oh. The one there, but Artis saves it for energy. An what? I, I told you it was over. You guys are in for a real treat this round. But Energy's buy is weak. Those kills at the end of last round were important. We see a Judge, Bulldog, a Stinger, but Ray's is one point off her Showstopper. So Energy are in a 2-3 setup with Sage walling for Ray's so she can get her ult online. Now Fury are planning on splitting B with 3 long and 2 hookah. The attackers start the round by walking up B short and dogging inside hookah. But inside, FNS has a Judge. He responds with a snake bite, and by this time, Ray's has her showstopper. Furia chases FNS out of hookah with her paint shells, but little do they know, this is exactly what he wants. As full snake spice already used oh! That went through the TP from the A site. They got blown up to pieces, and if you look at the round replay, this might be a lineup for specifically the entrance to Hookah. Now, doing a lineup like this is extremely risky. You're exposed to anyone in short, and you're literally a sitting duck. You need someone to hold for you. But that's what Harbor's for. If you look closely, he had his wall up and was holding it so that Victor could feel comfortable and take his time setting up this, uh, what's this type of play called that he set up? It's a trap. Yeah, that's the one. And it absolutely obliterated Furia with a three-piece. This was a pivotal round for their comeback. Now, despite some momentum shifting rounds last half, we're switching sides. NRG are now on the attack, and this is where Harbor shines brightest. If they're going to make a comeback, this is the half to do it on. They won the pistol the round after, and if they can pull out this bonus round too, their chances of coming back are looking really good. Their plan this round is to start in a spread 1-1-2-1 default, but they're quickly grouping up near a short and are going to go quick with the Sky Dog applying some pressure in shower. Furia are in a 2-3 setup and plan on anchoring sites with their much better weapons. Energy starts the round with a Harbor Cascade that flushes through Hookah and denies vision to anyone holding inside here. This makes the defense commit because anyone could be behind this thing. It's good pressure. In the meantime, Energy group up in their 4-1 split and start walking up behind their Viper Lurk Smokes. 
Raze takes a few shots, but has to drop since she can't see over this narrow lane. Energy have lamps, and Sky's dog is also applying a ton of pressure through shower, simulating an A-split. But that thing is just a fake. Som cascades to cutoff truck, and here's where you see their real game plan unfold. Normally with a sage, you don't really need showers control as much, because you can just wall up like this and get a safe plant off. But, if it's expected, teams can just spam this wall down and your game plan is ruined. Now, imagine this wall combined with Harbor's Cove. You need so many bullets to deny this plant that it's near impossible to stop. Literally. You need to commit a molly or something to cancel the plant, but sometimes that isn't even enough. And if you line it up right, the cove can protect the sage wall as it's fortifying, and then this utility is literally impenetrable. So, energy get a free plant, but now it's time for the retake. Mazin kicks it off by taking the teleporter and snuffing out crashes, but the attackers are still in strong post-plant positions. This is going to be a tough retake. Still energy at a disadvantage. CK. They're finding it. Onto the spike. Two left alive now for energy. It's Artis and Victor. And two versus three. Victor going inside the Cloudburst for the kill of Victor Juzine. Big kill to, to, to get as he gets traded off by Madzine. Artis on a 2v1. Makes it twice. Makes it for a 9 Okay, I kind of wish my Spectre did that, but Artis absolutely beams three different people with his Spectre. With it, he secures round 15 for energy, and the comeback is on. NRG were able to convert the eco round, and this forces Furia to take a timeout. Yo, why are we running Brimstone? What does this guy even do for us? He's, uh, he's got cool games to play on his iPad. Please get me out of here. So most rounds, Energy have started by throwing out this cascade to deny information from any hookah players. But this time, they're going to use it. They're in a 1-3-1 default with these three taking hookah and Viper creating pressure short. Furia have also invested an op into this round and plan on taking out this Viper. Brimstone is holding showers, but Raze and Jet have a crossfire on short. Raze is holding the left side and Jet is opping the right, knowing that Viper loves to start here to throw her smoke orb lineup. Energy start the round by slowly scaling up hookah, they get in position and take this space. Harbor's Cascade flushes through with Sky's Dog right behind it, and Ray's pops her showstopper in case anyone dared to stay in here. Now they haven't taken a hookah yet this game, so they expected someone to be in this area, but not this time. And this Cascade is perfect for taking hookah, because naturally, hookah has plenty of hard to clear crossfires and spots where you can get spammed from. What this does is help break up these crossfires combined with Sky's utility, but also denies information as to what's going on in this area. Now the next step of their plan is to unleash both their Sky Seekers and Harbor's Reckoning to overwhelm the site and take it. And once both of these big ults go off, FNS starts his lurk up short. Now his lurk wall has a small gap that he can squeeze behind for an even tighter lurk. But Jet wasn't born yesterday. Oh my god. The barrel of the gun sticking out. Kill out the now with all other map control lost, Energy immediately respond by pushing into Elbow. So while they can't find a kill, what they do do is bait out Furia's only utility. They burn their Seekers and their only Sky Flash. And since they only have one Initiator, this retake is going to be tough. The retake for Furia, as we've eaten it up on a 4v4. Big flash now coming out from Energy as they pick up three kills out of that, leaving MW0 by himself. A great hole for Energy on the pulse plan. Yeah, uh, like I said, one recharge flash just wasn't enough for this retake. These off angles that Energy played in were just too much, and Harbor went big with some important kills and utility. So after starting the game 1-7, Energy converted the anti-eco last round and have tied the match at 9 apiece. Yep, it's a comeback. This round, we're going to see Energy start in a spread default, but then they're going to group up short to do their fortified wall plant strat. But has Furia finally figured out a counter? They start this round in a 3-2 setup. Jet's going to get one with the ROP, Viper is anchoring Hookah, and Sky is the rotate between the two sites, and Raz and Brim are fighting for Shower. Now, without wasting any time, Victor satchels in the shower behind a Sky Flash, but Khalil mollies him off. But that's okay, because in a second, he's going to rumor through shower to create fake pressure that someone is coming in. But in reality, they're all just funneling up short. This attention being made should alleviate some of the spam they're going to receive when trying to plant. So he backs out of shower, gets ready to rumba, and Crashy starts to dog up short in response. And this thing spots nothing. So you literally see FNS sprint into lamps to take the space. Furia tries to dog back in response, 
response, but it's no use. He rips a molly, spreads his ult across lamps, and secures it for his team. Now the attackers turn their attention to sight. Som flips up his high tide, and they slowly scale up. He throws his cove down, Artis puts his wall up, and they go for their signature plant again. But Furia aren't letting them do this for free. Khalil unleashes his Bremolt, and this completely demolishes Energy's plant. And with all this commotion going on, Viper has taken the timing to push all the way through Hookah and hold all this map control for his team. Now, Energy is in a sticky situation. If they teleport, they'll get shot in the back, and they can't really rotate out because it'll take too much time and Viper's in a good spot, and they can't go for a plant without receiving a ton of gunfire. Energy's hands are tied and don't have a lot of options, but they do have one out, and it's Harbor's High Tide. The attackers wait for Som's wall to recharge, and they try to plant again. Now, Energy can still get spammed, but by walling off site like this, you isolate some of the angles you can get shot from and you can more accurately spam back at the defense. And with this wall, they get the plant down. Not only that, but Victor decided to wrap showers and go for a super late flank. Then Sam realizes that they're in a perfect position to pinch with this super late lurk. So he rips his reckoning and the retake attempt starts. One v one. The no scope cannon from DigiZine. Oh my gosh. Right into the chest. But Som gets that lurk out towards U-Haul. And now it seems that NW0 is just pinned out towards the A-side. Raisin Harbor's wrap into showers and around lamps were just too well-timed. Not only that, but Furia are having a hard time dealing with this Harbor utility. It's just too good. Energy have been pounding Furia in this comeback. They keep getting knocked onto Ecos, and they're trying to stabilize. Furia also haven't been doing a lot of damage in these rounds. Energy's economy is just too strong. I mean, take a look. They can probably buy for the rest of the game. But I mean, if Furia can somehow pull out this round with their weak weapons, it would be a game changer. They start in a 2-1-2 setup with Sky trying to do some damage with their Marshal, Viper anchoring down Hookah with a Judge, and the Duelists are fighting short with their Rifle and a Sheriff. But Energy have a weird game plan in store for this anti-eco. They want to take Hookah with Sky, Raze, and Harbor with Sage and Viper holding the extremities. But why is this strange? Good question, little Jimmy. Well, normally against eco rounds, you want to avoid Hookah at all costs. This part of the map is extremely close quarters, and these are exactly the fights that shotguns want to take. By fun Funneling out of long and just ignoring hookah by smoking it off, you're usually a lot safer. Now, if you have a harbor, this changes. I have mentioned before how this cascade can deny information and break up these crossfires. And this is why it's okay to push in here on eco rounds. But there's also something else I forgot to mention. The issue with executing on a hookah is that you need to jump out. What this does is make you defenseless as you're falling down, thus giving the defense a perfect time to swing out and get some free kills. But again, this isn't a problem with Harbor. His Cascade allows you to jump out of Hookah, and it blocks off a lot of potential angles where people might eliminate you from. So, with that being said, taking Hookah is actually pretty easy with Harbor, as you'll see here. But Energy start the round pretty passively. They're just holding for any pushes or risky plays that the defense might make since they're on an eco. They scale up near Hookah, and Viper is about to get overwhelmed. Som throws his Cascade, Crashy's Bird tells them that someone's in here, and they chase him out with a Sky Dog. If Viper has no choice, but to jump out of hookah and concede the space. Because who knows, anyone could be following this wall. So with hookah control, energy then turn their attention to long. The defending sky tries to get some information with her dog, but it gets shot from too far back. She then tries to go for some chip damage with her marshal, but she gets turned down again. So energy have hookah, long, and they're ready to split B. But at the last second, FNS feels like they could go A with all of this pressure they've created on B. So Som sends out his second Cascade, plus a Skybird, to deny anyone from peeking into Long. NRG are on their way to A, but Furia think they have the read. Regain the space, Van Silly. Oh, the timing on that, a double TP oh, from no, the side. They wanted to go for a trap play for Pain no Shells and the Sands. But instead because energy pushed viper out of hookah and they had no information on long furia had to base this teleporter push based purely off of instinct so with this perfect defaulting energy are rewarded with the entirety of a site to themselves and furia have no choice but to play exits but i mean energy have so much money that it's almost not even worth it looking here that furia wants to try to attempt to hurt the economy of energy for furia also wanted to keep this phantom that mwz are kept on that previous yeah. round wow 
After their misread last round, Furia have a solid chance at winning this one. They have an op on Jet again, but they also have Viper with her pit online anchoring B. They're in a 2-3 setup. NRG are going to have a rough time dealing with this one. But these guys are back to their plant on A with the wall cove game plan again. They're spread out with these two sending a cascade and slow orb to pressure B before grouping back short. The round starts with this said utility and energy starts their trek up short. They put up their viper wall, but Dejazin isn't letting them get this space for free. He waits for the dog to get closer and swings to catch anyone following it. He locks onto Ray's, but at the last possible second, the dog is like, Mr. President, get down! And he saves Victor. Because of this dog's heroics, Victor only goes down to 11 HP. Sky patches him up, and they get ready to hit short again. They wait for FNS's fuel to recharge and put up their wall. Crashy flashes through it, but then Som puts up his cascade. And again, we see another great use for this utility. Since they know the op is somewhere in A site, this wall completely denies vision from heaven, behind truck, back sight, and triple, and combined this with the smoke orb on lamps, this op completely gets snuffed out. If the operator can't see, it's useless. So energy scale in, put up their high tide, Artist goes on top of his wall to apply even more pressure, and Som fortifies the wall for the free plant. Furia comes in for the retake, and they have energy trapped mostly in short. But if these site players can stall out long enough, these flankers should close out the round. As Digizine does make the operator ring to make it the player advantage for Fury on this retake, and it's working out for the defenders. The lurk doesn't work out, but the flash it will. It's gonna fly so many. They just couldn't survive long enough, so this push puts artists in a 1v4, but um, it doesn't look like Furia knows he's in shower. He does get the first pick! Oh, the second man, one! Silly. Back onto the tap! Okay. But then finally, the high low then Furia barely holds on for one more round. So that last round was all Furia needed. They went blow for blow for the last few rounds, and they've managed to make this a very close game. If energy want to avoid overtime, they need this one. Their plan this round is similar to last. They're going to apply pressure on B with 3 long, a cascade in hookah, and viper short. But Furia have the read, and it couldn't come at a more perfect time. They're set up with Sky gathering information on long, Brim alongside her, viper holding short, while these two duelists are going to push all the way through shower for the first time. Energy start the round with a wide swing and a slow orb towards long, predicting that the defense is going to go for their viper result. But no one's here. The offense applies a bit more pressure by dogging long and sending a Roomba into hookah, but this pressure has sparked a reaction by the defense. Both Jed and Rays have confidently pushed all the way through showers with all that pressure being made on B. And this is a good read. Energy have actually yet to take this part of the map. And by wrapping short like this, they can punish the attackers for always grouping up in this area. So while Energy are grouping up, they have no idea that they're about to get flanked. You can keep pushing this in mid. The Jazine with the Tailwind, I've stopped by Som, and no Seekers actually might call out the second player, MW0 pushed out, who's forced down. Dejazin thought that Viper was all by herself, and he accidentally gives Energy the trade. Crashies pops his Seekers to give his team some space so that Artis can get his res off. And because of the res, this proactiveness that these duelists made was all for nothing. NRG immediately use their Viper Smokes to walk up short and create some form of space after all this chaos. To take this fight. And you never really want to stack everyone in U-Haul, so that 2v1 becomes energies once again. Reckoning to Khalil now- QCK had no idea they were walking his way, and energy explode with their Harbor's Reckoning. Now, energy know that there's three players left, and when you use Harbor's Ultimate, it makes a gong sound when someone's in it. Listen. Let's turn the die! Ultimate ready! Let's turn the die! Ultimate ready! Not only that, but energy also see two lightning bolts appear in the sky. They're assuming that all three are here and they immediately take the teleporter. But keep in mind, they only know for sure that two were on A. There is a real chance that this third person is still anchoring sight. So as they're funneling through, Artis walls off the teleporter so they can't get shot in the back. FNS takes it too and he waits back inside to see if Furia teleports themselves. But can Sky, the side anchor, save this round? He plays clear. Not at all. The hero of this story was just too aware. FNS ends up getting a kill through the teleporter, making this a 5 versus 1. Khalil tries to make it close by snagging a few bodies, but this is just too much for him. The peak, he saw the second player being finesse. But that's so now, if this game hasn't convinced you that Harbor really is the future of this map, then I'm sorry to break it to you, but you're just delusional.